My name is Francisco de Cuellar. I believe that you will be astonished at reading this letter to hear that yes, I remain alive. Right to tell you of the hardships and misfortunes I have endured since the Armada set sail from Lisbon for England, and from which our Lord, in his infinite grace, has delivered. The seeds of the Spanish Armada were planted after the death of Mary, the English Catholic Queen. She was the only child of Henry VIII and his Spanish Queen Catherine. Her half-sister Elizabeth, a Protestant, has now ascended to the throne. Mary was married to King Philip of Spain, but after her death, Philip sought Elizabeth's hand in marriage. His goal was to form an alliance and return England to Catholicism. She refused to leave in our king with little choice. The English sent the pirate Captain Drake to raid our colonies and our ports. And so, in May of 1588, a great armada of 130 ships sets out to overthrow Elizabeth and to restore the one true faith. But not all who lead us have sailed before. They do not understand the perils of the seas we sail not the challenges of the enemies we face. Under orders from the king, we await reinforcements from Parma's army sailing from Flanders. And while we delay, the English send fire ships at night to break up our fleet. In the darkness, many ships collide. Chaos and confusion reign. By morning, we are engaged in fierce fighting and the English unleash their long guns. Too often they find their mark. The battle begins to slip away. Victory no longer possible. The route south to Spain is blocked by the English. We must take to the North Seas, strange and unknown to us. Against the orders of the Duke, the ship I captain, the San Pedro, is one of several forced to break formation to effect repairs. For this act, I'm summoned to court martial. If found guilty, I will hang. And death is my sentence. I am charged with their reliction of duty. But my execution is delayed. I am placed in the custody of the most honorable Don Diego Enriquez, captain of La Lavia. My life, for now, is spared. To Scotland and then around Ireland, our course lies. Hundreds of miles of strange and wild seas between us and Spain and the storm is brewing on the horizon. September 1588. At the mercy of the great gale, three ships of the Armada, La Juliana, Santa Maria de Bison, and La Lavia, have broken away from the main fleet. We are lost in open seas, and in the face of the rising storm, are driven back towards the treacherous Irish coast. Christian yet savage land unknown to us. And so it was that on the fifth day, there sprang up so great a storm on our beam, with the sea up to the heavens, so that the cables could not hold, not the sails of us. Many were drowning. The waves swept others away, washing them from the ships. Duke warned, take great heed lest you fall up on the island of Ireland for fear of the harm that may happen to you on that coast. Alas, fate is against us, and our enemies gather on the shore. Upon a beach where 
reckless chaos awaits. Those who have not been taken by the sea are cut down by English soldiers and robbed by savages. Barely able to stand, I crawl through the carnage, finding shelter among the dunes. By morning, the wind has eased and the sea has calmed. Before me now, all lies in ruin. The beach offers nothing but destruction and death. A deserted strip of rocks reveals a monastery and perhaps some hope for sanctuary in this barren land. has surely abandoned us. Hanging from the beams of this holy place, twelve Spaniards dead at the hands of the barbarous English. No quarter given or mercy shown. The ships are my only hope now. I return to the wrecks in search of food or water. The savages have fed on our misfortune, taking gold and jewels, casting the dead aside. I see the face of one and you, Don Diego Enriquez, captain of La Labia. He was a friend. He will not lie here for the cross to pick over his bones. I will bury his remains, and if I survive, return his ring to his family. for my countrymen is callous and mercifully quick. The English slaughter those who remain alive, stealing the last breath from dying Spaniards. All around the natives plunder and destroy. I've never been more alone. I place myself in the hands of God and His eternal mercy. Take yourself and travel to the hills. Find O'Rourke. Find his castle. You'll be safe there. Go, go on, go on, go on. All my comrades are dead and my life hangs by a thread. I will leave this God-forsaken place. I must survive. I will go on. With every hour that passes, I sink in despair. A wound in my leg is infected. Now, I fear disease will take me before hunger does. I must find a way to work, there to seek safety and a route home. But danger lies at every turn. Stop! Don't kill him! Father, please, we have taken a note. Leave him, daughter. We must get to the ships and not waste time on a corpse. Daughter, leave him now! Oh, my God. 
my hopes of survival diminish with every passing hour. And yet, despite the fate that has befallen me, there is some Christian kindness in this land. When least expected, the hand of generosity is revealed. Spear. Spear. Come. 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 Why this man helps me, I cannot say. The English hunt Spaniards in the forest, and if they find us, we will both die. Farewell, Spain. My son here will guide you to O'Rourke's castle, and there you will be safe. Travel well. This stranger offers me great aid and shows me untold kindness. His balm heals me and my strength returns. His son will guide me through this land of savages and Englishmen. I feel the light of hope in my heart. We keep to the hills to avoid the eyes of the enemy. Here, in the shadow of the mountain, we advance. Seeing none as we take the course for a walk. The boy knows his path well, and our luck holds. On the track below, no English appear. But we move slowly, and many leagues remain. How did this come to pass? Our noble cause dashed to pieces, and we soldiers banished, forever perhaps, to roam these lands. Yet the innocent too may pay dearly for all wars with the English. Quiet now, I fear the approach. The danger passes, but for how long will my good fortune last? I move on, step by step, in search of a work. This friend of Spain, and the man in whose hands my fate now rests. The mountain offers poor sustenance, and the need for food leaves few choices for the journey ahead. Beside a lake, I see an encampment of woods. They lie deserted, for now. Madre de Dios, sed conmigo y libradme de todo mal. Sea con nosotros esa gran señora. ¿Españoles? Sí, somos nosotros. ¿Quién es usted? Soy el Capitán Cuayer. Capitán. Ah. Le lavamos por ahogado. Tenga buen ánimo. Y encomiéndense a nuestro señor. Traigo lengua de un villaje a tres o cuatro leguas de aquí, el señor O'Rourke. Y aunque vengo maltratado y herido, mañana caminaremos por allá.
At last, I'm blessed to meet with comrades who too have suffered great misfortunes. A rogue, they say, is a good Christian and an enemy of the heretic English. Together, we move on. For days, I've hidden in the shadow. Evading many, I have received kindness from the few. Surviving on scraps in this cold and desolate land. But here I find a moment of peace. O'Rourke is gone with his forces to fight in the East. But his people are kind and have no prejudice. There are many Spaniards here. All are broken. All are frozen. We must rally and find a way home to the warmth of Spain. Señor. Podré hablar con usted. Por supuesto que se haga un pase. Nos llega la noticia de que una nave española ha llegado a la costa y ha venido a rescatar a aquellos de nosotros que hemos sobrevivido a la muerte. Si eso es cierto, hay que marchar mañana a primera hora. Señor, si usted quisiera venir con nosotros, nos daría mucha fuerza. Lo intentaré, pero estoy mal herido. Parece que estoy destinado a caminar solo para no retrasarles. De todas formas, lo importante es salvarse. Así que marchen, marchen lo antes posible y cojan esa nave, ¿de acuerdo? Una última cosa. Hágale llegar esto a la familia del comandante Don Diego Enríquez y dígales que murió con honor. Así lo haré. Every day that passes brings word that the governor of the Queen has sent a force to eradicate all remaining Spanish survivors. More than 1,000 men died on the beach. The English now march west to finish off all that remain alive. They boast that no servant of Philip will escape death. Upon leaving the stronghold of a work, I quickly fall behind my countrymen. I never reached La Girona, which sinks in a gale as it sails for Scotland. All of them are lost. Fate holds me in its grasp, its purpose yet unclear. Word from a priest has now sent me on a new path in search of the chieftain, Ty Cook Mackenzie. For now, life is good. The people here, though poor, treat us well. My fellow Spaniards share much with them in prayer and in life. They live off the land and the sea. They tell great stories, tales of myth and legend steeped in the mystic past of this ancient land. In their constant war with the English, these skills with steel will serve them well. For three months, McClanchy shelters and protects the few Spaniards that remain. But our fate is about to change again, when word comes of the sighting of the enemy. The news has come, sir. A large force of English soldiers are approaching from the east. They seek Spanish soldiers and those who have offered them protection. They know who they seek, my lord. It seems the English approach. I will hang for helping the Spanish. For now, we will take shelter in a place the English dare not venture. We will retreat to the hills until they end this search. You will come with us. We will fight the Sassanach another day. Sir. And in your name, if you allow it, I will make a stand. My men are few, but we are brave. It will be our honor to hold them to here. I will fight the English with every last drop of blood I possess. If you wish to stay, you have my blessing. 
There's food enough to survive a winter, and my castle is strong. We will depart immediately. De Quayar. I wish you luck. The English call to us and say that we, fierce partners, will never hold out against a great army of men. Surrender, and we will be granted safe passage to Spain. Refuse, and we will hang. Just as we were swept from all ships in the bay, once again we face an enemy swarm to destroy us. But they will not break our island castle easily. What we lack in men, we will prevail with our strength of will. We will fight for the souls of our fallen comrades. For the first time, the winter gives us comfort. With food and provisions to outlast the English, we have our God to help us see out this siege. Within these walls, we may meet death, yes, but we will do so with honor. Our lack holds. Soon, winter snow drives the English to seek shelter and retreat, clearing a path to freedom. The English leave, but when spring breaks, they will return. So we must make good or escape where we can. Now the final chance for freedom. A dash in the shadows towards the northern coast where our escape has been assured. The time has come, Captain. Your ship awaits. We have seen to it that safe passage has been arranged for you and your men. So the die is cast, Father. I will leave this savage land, my home for more than seven months. We sail to Flanders to hope for the future and to fight again for Spain. May God keep you and preserve you from your enemies. My survival to tell this story is a miracle. So many died in Ireland and many more on the journey to this place. Bring word of this tale to the right ears that I might return with honor to Spain and that my service to the king may be restored. I may yet pay a price for the fortune of my survival, so be it. This I've wished to write to you.